Thank you for uh, attending and, and looking into seeing this uh, short talk, uh, Dr. Rizek and the SF, SIF organizers in the virtual SIF for 2020. I'm fortunate to be a participant. I'm Michael Lim. I'm the director for the Center for Comprehensive Cardiovascular Care at St. Louis University. I'd like to talk to you about using Impella for uh, protected elective high-risk PCI. My disclosure is over the past 12 months, I continue to be a consultant and receive speaker fees from Abnumed. The case presentation, I'd like to talk to you about a 73-year-old man. This is a remarkable man because he had heart transplant 30 years ago, continues to see us every few years for uh, follow-up. And uh, his last angiogram was done about four years ago in which he had mild luminal narrow, narrowing irregularities and did not have any focal stenosis. So he'd been done been doing quite well in his post-transplant course. Now he presents, unfortunately, with significant fatigue and exertional intolerance. Echo showed an ejection fraction of about 35%. His blood pressure is 110 over 70. And given all of this, he underwent a coronary angiography. Diagnostic coronary angiography shows that certainly a lot has changed within the last four years. And that is, you know, he has a, a left main bifurcation lesion into the LAD and circumflex. He has an AV groove circumflex, big OM bifurcation lesion, as well as a bifurcation lesion within his LED diagonal system. And then the right corner artery also shows a little bit of a proximal PDA lesion uh, as well. And so if you look at this gentleman, he has, uh, of course, post-transplant, but which takes him out of any uh, data which has been generated. But if you imagine this is a patient who hasn't been translated or transplanted, you know, you have a real patient with an EF that's reduced, and you have multivessel coronary disease with complex coronary anatomy. And so I think the best data which looks at, well, how should you proceed if you're going to provide revascularization for this patient in the cath lab continues to be PROTECT2. And again, all patients and all studies have their flaws and their limitations, but PROTECT2 took patients with ejection fractions such as this patient, randomized them to revascularization with the balloon pump versus Impella, and showing that you know, the long-term MACE, or the, re the reduction or the ability to stay away or not stay away from death, stroke, MI, or repeat revascularization, and the Impella group for these patients uh, had a 29% reduction in the Impella group versus the balloon pump group. And if we look at what we should expect in terms of overall outcome improvement, including PROTECT2, which is in the lower right corner, two Italian registry studies in the upper left corner, PROTECT1, or the small pilot study, which uh, predated PROTECT1, as well as the US Impella registry, the left ventricular ejection fraction with revascularization in the Impella-supported patients improved in all four of these studies. So if you translate into our patient with a reduced ejection fraction, whereas ago, not that long ago, it was normal, even though he's post-transplant, if we're able to revascularize this gentleman and get him through the procedure without hemodynamic compromise and get complete revascularization, we should be able to get him to stay away from MACE over the next 90 days, as well as see an improvement in his injection fraction. And so we believe that this supports the idea that an impella supported protected PCI in a patient like this is a good choice. And that's what we proceeded with. This is the back of the days before we did single access PCI. And so we looked at the alternative groin access and we got groin access in the left common femoral. Now we've been taught that we can actually get groin access in the same uh, sheath as the impella catheter. And when we look at this and we can then wire the LAD, wire the diagonal, wire into the circumflex, and then be able to perform multiple balloon inflations, either in singular or in tandem, to provide not only bifurcation uh, intervention within the left main, but treat the circumflex and the OM, as well as the LAD and the diagonal, and the PDA, which is not shown here, to provide complete revascularization with the final results showing TIMI-3 flow 
down the circumflex, down the OM, down the diagonal, and down the LED in these two vessels, as well as, and not shown, and I apologize, Timmy 3 flow into the PDA, we see successful revascularization. And at times when we show these types of things, we can see successful revascularization and everybody says, oh yeah, this is a successful revascularization. I could have done this without support or I could have done this with a balloon pump result. And both could be true and anecdotally potentially are true. But I think when you look back at PROTECT2, over, over 400 patients randomized, you see that when you do this time and time again, you get the benefit of freedom from MACE, improved patient outcomes. And that's why we use the Impella selectively upfront in the PROTECT2 type of patients. And so what are the take home points? You know, we're talking about patients with complex coronary artery disease. This is a patient I described in terms of post-transplant with multi-vessel bifurcation disease, ejection fraction less than 35% with exertional uh, symptoms and, and increasing shortness of breath, uh, but these comorbidities, complex coronary disease, and decreased ejection fraction all combined in the same patient certainly predict a group of patients who have been shown to be able to be successfully revascularized with impella support. I hope that this is helpful to help describing and understanding how to use a tool such as impella to be able to best assist your patients in your cath lab. And again, I'd like to you know, give a shout out to Dr. Rizek and the SIF uh, organizers to take on the task of doing SIF virtually and trying to provide the same value of education that we enjoyed for years in Scottsdale in a virtual environment and look forward to seeing all of you in Scottsdale in the near future. Hope everybody does well. Take care and thank you very much.